I'm going to start with this. If I could get your attention, I know we started a little late. I apologize. Um, misfortune weighs most heavily on those who expect nothing but good fortune. I, I think that this is a really good place to start. And, and the reason I say this is because, and first of all, I absolutely love, hey guys, love Seneca, love you know, um, Stoic philosophy. But I, I think too often we, we think to ourselves that, you know, the market is going to help your business. Like, that's not how we should be focusing on this. It's not a, that's not how we work. I mean, we're, you know, we're people, we're resources that, that people come to to try to improve their situation. If they needed to rely on the market, they could just as easily go to Zillow or Realtor.com or wherever else. Like, this is not, you know, it shouldn't be driven off of what the market's doing. Like, we can't worry about the ebbs and flows of the market. What we need to worry about is what we're doing. And what I find is when I talk about this sexy topic of set it and forget it, like a lot of people get really excited about that. And, and I'm not trying to knock anybody in here, but they get excited about that because of, you know, they feel like, oh, wait, I could forget it. <laughs> like, you know, like that's the best part about, you know, set it and forget it is I could forget it. I don't have to think about this. But it doesn't mean the set it and forget it philosophy is not about just forgetting it. It's about the first part, which is setting it up. And setting it up doesn't mean it's easy. So, and I know that that may seem like counterintuitive because all of you guys probably came here hoping to see something that will make my life easier, and this will. But there is still some work attached to this. And I want you to understand that as we go through this. Don't just think that it's like, you know, there's nothing to do here. You know, you do have to set some of these systems up, but if you set them up properly, they're really going to be rewarding to you. So the biggest thing that I hear about setting up systems is time. I have no time to do what I need to do in order to, to be successful. You know, I'm running around and I, you know, I don't have any more time to dedicate towards systems. And to me, like, I feel like that's like the, the, the biggest um, misconception of sorts. And, and the, the, the best way that I've seen it said is actually this, is like, no thank you when somebody's trying to give them the wheel. <laughs> Like, it's a great analogy for this because, you know, yes, you're busy. I understand you're busy. We're all busy. And I'm going to get to that in a second about how busy some of us are. But just because you're busy doesn't mean anything. Like, it's just, you know, if you set the right systems up and you put yourself on automated systems, naturally what's going to happen is you're going to check off boxes that you would have missed otherwise. And I think that that's the big part of this that I'm trying to get through. So let's talk about a little bit of math, everybody's favorite topic. First thing we'll start off with is open houses. Now I'm a big proponent of open houses. I'm not trying to knock open houses, but I want to take a little bit of a different thought process on open houses. So you guys do open houses. Let's do some math. You do one open house every single weekend. Let's just say that that's the, the standard, which is hard to do in today's market when we have no inventory. Like, but you know, we, we do one open house every weekend. And let's say you do that 52 times a year. I bet you there's nobody in here who does that, but let's just assume that that's the standard. That's a lot. That's a lot of you know, doing open houses every weekend. Let's just say 20 people walk into your open house every single weekend, which also is a lot. I'm, I'm trying to be aggressive with this intentionally. So that's 1,040 contacts a year. Now, we all know if 20 people walk into your open house, chances are you're not gonna build a relationship with 20 people. Like, I would love for you to, I mean, all of us would, but you're going to have five people that walk in at the same time and you kind of have to pick and choose who you're talking to and who you're spending your time with. And you got to very quickly make a decision in terms of, you know, is this person an A buyer, a B buyer, a C buyer? You know, where are they in their, in their buying process? And, you know, naturally you're going to gravitate towards those that are, you know, really interested and motivated to make a move. So you're going to miss some of these people is the point. The New York Times came out with, a, you know, with a, an article that said the average American knows how many people, and the answer was 600. So there's 600 people that the average American knows. So all of you in this room, most of you, you know, maybe you know more, maybe you know less. I would say most people would probably know more in this room because you guys are realtors. But when you think about that, and by the way, this is a study done by Columbia. So pretty effective study. They came out with this. And most people don't think about all the people they know when they get into real estate. You know, you start thinking about it. And a lot of people, when I'm recruiting agents, and I, I, you know, I recruit a lot, as you know, most of the people in this room have been recruited by me. Like, when you recruit agents, like you sit down, you have conversations with them. What I realize as they're coming over to us is most people have terrible systems. Most agents, you know, never really put together their CRM. 
have never really took the time to sat down, like sit down and actually put together you know, all of their contacts and all of that. They just don't do it because they're so busy. And the answer is, is like, I understand that you're so busy, but you might know 600 people on average, and I have tools that I could give you. Anybody who wants them, I could send them out after this meeting. I have tools that I could give you that will literally say like, will ask you questions like, who's your stylist? Who's your accountant? Who's your whatever? Because those are people that you know that you probably have, you know, could get or have their information, their email address, you know, certainly their address in many cases, if you know where they live, we have tax records for most of these people. You could look that information up or you could simply ask them and say like, hey, I wanted to send you something. Can you give me your email address? Most of these people, they know you, they like you, they work with you already, or you're their client. So of course they're gonna be willing to give that to you. So if you reach out to those people and start building up that list, chances are on average, you're gonna have 600 people in that list. If you take those 600 people and you put them in your CRM and you do one video every Friday for a minute long. Now I know that most people like, I, they hear the word video and they're like, Ugh, like I have no interest of doing video, but I'm just using video and the reason why I'm using video in this conversation is the last time I'm gonna talk about video for this you know, with very little exception. But the reason why I'm saying video is because video is what people are looking for today. You know, most people would rather sit at home and watch Netflix than go to the library. And you know, I'm not knocking libraries, but the truth is, is that's what people are looking for. They don't read. So, you know, we're sending out information in, you know, in, in written form. And by the way, I love to write. Absolutely love to write. When I was in real estate, you know, in sales, I know you guys have read many of my books, <laughs> my, my novels that come out. But I, I love to write like for years. And the thing is, is like, you know, I, I would do that because that's like the, that's the form of communication that I feel most comfortable in. But I know that there's sometimes I send out emails and then a week later, somebody will come in and ask me the same question that I just sent out an hour long email on. And I'm like, ugh. But like the truth is, is that's on me. That's not on the, that person. It's on me because I sent it out in a form that they're not connecting with. Like in communication is about the sender trying to connect with you know, the person you're sending it to. So let's just say a minute a week and you're doing it for 52 weeks a year. So you're keeping the same exact standard that we're talking about with open houses. That's 31,200 contacts. It's a big difference. I mean, so much so, if you take 31,200 contacts, you divide it out by the number of contacts that you would meet at open houses, that's 30 years worth of open houses would take you to get to the same amount of touches in terms of people that you're connecting with. Now I realize that this thousand is brand new people, but like we already established that like it's never gonna be this high. Like there's no way, because you're not gonna do 52 open houses a year, and you're not gonna have 20 people walk into open houses and every one you do, and you're not gonna connect with those 20 people every single time you do one. So like to me, this is almost cake. Like it's a great way to build up your business, build up your network. I'm not knocking open houses at all, keep doing them. But really the, the better return is on getting people into your CRM and then constantly connecting with them on a level that they understand. So. If you look at the world through the lens of contacts, you're basically, that to me is the way that I would look at it. Like you have 30 years of open houses every single weekend equals one year of 600 people in your CRM receiving a video a week. Like that's the, that is literally the difference in terms of contacts. And it's probably even more lopsided than I'm showing. And the question is this, like that's awesome, don't get me wrong. It shows you the return in terms of getting in front of people. But imagine if you had 10,000 people in there because we're talking about 600. But like some of you guys have been in real estate a long time. Like some of you are brand new in real estate, great. If your mission from today moving forward is sit down, take the time to get everybody you know into your CRM, and then from there, you know, continue to build upon that because it's not a one-time thing, that whole set it and forget it thing. You can't forget it first. You gotta set it first. So what you're doing is every time you meet somebody at an open house, every time you meet somebody in life, you keep adding them to your CRM. I remember I was on the West Coast one time and I was talking to a very large team. It was a, you know, somebody who ran a very large team. It was a 30 under 30, we were at you know, a 30 under 30 event, Mastermind, and we're having this conversation and I said, you know, how many people do you guys have in your CRM? And she looked at me and she goes, you don't wanna know. And I said, no, I really, I'm curious. Like, I know you guys run a big team. Like, how many people do you have in your CRM? She said over 300,000. And I looked at her and I was like, I almost fell out of my chair. But like, I mean, they're selling thousands of homes a year. 
like out of this team. So like, how does that happen? Well, if you send messages to 300,000 people every time you send them out, it's like a megaphone. I mean, you're, you're basically like projecting like from the top of a concert hall, like, you know, multiple times over every time you send an email out. I don't expect anybody in this room to get to 300,000, but my point is, is like, imagine if you got to 10,000. Like, you think you'll sell more houses? Because I do. So with 10,000 people, and then you add in this, this other level to it, and the other level is automations. So like, all we're talking about to start this off is, is this system of getting people into your CRM. Like, and by the way, it's not just your CRM, it's more than that, and we're gonna get into that. But once you've done, you've gotten these people into your CRM, then it's about automating it. And again, it doesn't mean you're automating your whole business. You're automating portions of your business because you want to free yourself up to do other things that are going to be lucrative for your business or for quality of life. So what do I mean by automations? Let's talk about that. I'm gonna do a case study. The case study is me. So when you think about me and, and you know, what I have going on in my life, very easily everybody knows that you know, I've, run in, I've been running Maplewood for the last 10 years. I've obviously had my hands in other operations within Coldwell Banker and, and I still do. I'm you know, very busy with the real estate brokerage side. So I love that portion of my life. Like I, I appreciate all of you guys here. Um, and that's, you know, that takes up the majority of my time. That's the honest truth. You know, not next to that, but like more important than that are my kids. Like I have three beautiful little girls, love them to death. And you know, I have a beautiful wife and I'm, I'm blessed to, to have the family that I have. But you could imagine three kids, five or under, I got my hands full at home. Like, it's not, you know, I go home and the job doesn't end. It's like, you know, I'm still doing everything I possibly can. Some of you guys are nodding your head, you're there with me. So that's definitely a big part of life. But what about, you know, is that it? Is that all I do? No. I also raise a tremendous amount of money for charity. I run marathons every single year, which anybody who's ever run a marathon, you'll know it's a, it's a part-time job minimum. Like, you know, you're running hours and hours and hours every week. It's a lot. So I have all of these things going on. I don't have a lot of time. I have very little time, in fact. But I still like, you know, even though I have such little time, I still have dreams. I still have things that I want to accomplish in my life. Welcome. I still have a lot of things that I want to accomplish. And I could tell you one of the biggest dreams that I had in my life was investing in real estate. And I tell you that because that's the reason that I got into real estate in the first place. Like I went in when, when we sat down originally, I'm looking at Cara Lee because she was my first broker. So, you know, I walked in and like, I didn't want to be in real estate full time. I was thinking of going corporate America. And Cara Lee was like, well, we only hire full time people. And I looked at her and I was like, well, I better be full time. So, you know, I, I decided to, to go in full time and do that. But in the back of my mind, I still had this drive that I wanted to invest in real estate. That was what brought me into this business to begin with. And I hope all of you guys feel that on some level because it's such a great thing to invest in real estate and, and get the benefits of what we know and love and sell. So to me, like it's, it's one of the best things I've ever done in my life. So I went out and I started, you know, I, I started slowly because that's where you start. You kind of like you crawl before you walk, you walk before you run. So I started slowly and I went out and I started investing in single family homes. I invested in two single family homes in New Providence. I invested in three in Long Valley. And I started to like build up a little bit of a, of a portfolio of, of homes. And that was great. Like, you know, I have, you know, I have, uh, funds, you know, uh, you know, things to say about investing in single family, but it's not super lucrative and it's not to the scale that I want it to be. So then I started to invest in multifamily homes. I bought a bed and breakfast. I bought an apartment building. I, I bought like a couple of, uh, you know, five units upstate. And I started to like start to build up a bigger portfolio of what I'm investing in. But here's the thing, if you, when you're starting to, these are all short-term rentals that I'm showing and there's, there's others, but when you start investing in short-term rentals, you can't run it the same way that you run this. And it's, it's really a, a perfect analogy for your business because when you first start going, you get going in real estate, you think that like, okay, I could run a business and just keep scaling my business because everybody in here also has aspirations and dreams. You all want to grow your business. So you think that like, okay, I'm going to keep scaling my business, doing the exact same things that I'm doing today, but that's not accurate. There's no way you're gonna scale your business doing the same things that you do today. So you have to change, and what changes is, is really the question. So for me, we started doing syndication and pushing out to all these different sites. And when I started pushing out to all these different sites, what happens? 
It's the same thing that happens in your business. It starts to grow. And you start getting all of these people, hundreds and thousands of people that are hitting you up and that, that want to get into your, your homes and they want to stay there. And like, I don't have time. You think I'm sitting there every single day, like, you know, you know typing away at like, like, okay, I'm going to book this one and book that one. No way. No way. I can't do that. So how do we do it? We create systems. So think about this. From a systems perspective, anytime somebody books on any one of those sites, I have an automated software that shoots out an email to the guest. It says, thank you so much for booking with us. Here's your reservation. It welcomes them, yada, yada, yada. You're gonna receive you know, all of your, you know, your key and your, your, your instructions, your check-in instructions and personal access code will be sent three days prior to arrival. They're getting all of that. All right, so now, right off the bat, they already feel welcomed. They know they're in good hands when they, when they book with us. The next thing is, three days before check-in, I send them their access code. This is an old access code. I'm not giving somebody else's, somebody else's uh, code to their room. Um, basically, I'm sending all this out so they get another email that gives them all that information. I have a smart lock system. This is really cool. So when somebody books with us, this automated system, it's through remote lock, and it's like basically these locks are on every single room that we have. All of those locks are built into Airbnb and to Expedia and to all of those different systems. So wherever these people book from, it sends a message to this lock wirelessly to let them know that these are the times that this access code is gonna work. So I don't touch any of that. I have nothing to do with like setting up locks, setting up codes, none of that. It's just the system. Sends that out, it's automated. Now the person is checking out. The morning of the checkout, they get another email telling them the instructions to check out. When they check out, it sends a message through the locks to our cleaning service. Now our cleaning service goes out and they like flip the room over. We have like, you know, we have uh, property managers that, that change all the rooms over. As soon as that person is done changing the rooms over, they flip a switch, it alerts the next guest that's coming in that their room is ready. I haven't touched anything, literally haven't touched anything from the point in time that that person booked to the point in time that the next room is coming in, I have not done one thing, nothing. It's all automated, the whole thing, the whole process is automated. Now, the crazy thing is like, of course, like when that happens, like, you know, you ever hear the, the, I might've said it before, but every level has a new devil. Like as you scale, as you grow, there are challenges that you're going to come across. When we started to get hundreds and thousands of guests that stayed with us, like now we're like, okay, like we have other things that come up. Well, guess what? When an issue pops up, you fix it. You create a system for it because if you have to do something twice, you should probably do a system for it. So when you talk about the system, every level having a new devil, like one of the things that we had, I'm just gonna give you a couple of examples of this, is we have this, you know, we have these beautiful porches that sit out and people could overlook the water. Like people love to sit out there, why wouldn't they? But the problem is, is our next door neighbors, we're not too happy about that because it was getting loud late at night. So we were getting like people that were like hitting us up saying like, I'm going to call the police. Like you don't understand. I don't want these phone calls and I'm neighborly. Like I don't want to upset the neighbors either. So immediately when we bought the place, I was the one that walked over to the neighbors and said, if there's ever an issue, here's my cell phone number. Call me. I never want you to have a problem because I just don't want to operate that like, like that. I want everybody in the neighborhood to be happy. So what did they do? Started ringing up my cell phone. It was one of the only phone calls I was getting, but I was getting those phone calls and I said, we got to fix this. So what do we do? We went out and we invested in something called noise aware. Noise aware basically puts all of these things, these little sensors, wherever you want them. So we put noise aware sensors on the outside. Like, so it will literally send me a text message if the octaves within the building are getting too loud or outside are getting too loud. I will know immediately that that's happening. I also, we put all sorts of cameras, wireless cameras, not in the rooms obviously, but like on the outside places, not being creepy. <laughs> But we basically, you know, we put them like in the hallways, we put them like on the outdoors, why? Because I wanted to have eyes and ears on the property to know that if there's an issue, I have to address it. And, and by the way, with this system, like where I'm getting it, but we're still alerting a property manager, I'm still not dealing with it directly, but the point is, is like, it's all automated. Everything in there is automated. So now you're scaling, everybody like, you know, 
people think success looks like this. It doesn't look like a straight line. Of course it's squiggles. Like there's a million different challenges that you have. But like what we started to think about is like, we were like, okay, we're doing an awesome job on getting people into the building. So awesome that we have like almost no vacancy. Like on all of our buildings, they're all occupied. But that in itself is a problem. We thought, you know, originally we thought that that was the solution. Well, that's not the solution. If every single person is coming in here and it's booked like this, we're priced too low. So what we started to realize is like, you know what? We're not good enough on pricing because unlike the MLS, when we go out and look at the MLS and try to figure out like this house versus that house, you know how hard it is to do with that with thousands of different units across all markets? I don't know which, is there an event upstate? Is there an event down there? I can't keep track of all that stuff. I needed a system for it. So what do we do? We went out and got Beyond Pricing. Beyond Pricing is a system that basically helps us understand pricing within the neighborhood and sets pricing standards for us. So now all of our properties have pricing standards set up to make sure that not only are we occupied, but we're occupied and we're getting the best rents we possibly could get. It's a big difference in terms of how you operate. Now I'm gonna tell you, all of these systems are not free. Like, of course they cost us something. But the truth of it is, is if you look at like in totality, even if we're giving away 30% of the profit, like it's 30% of a much larger number because of what we have and we're not doing anything. We're not even thinking about it. Just the peace of mind is worth it. So the next thing is we said, you know what? We have full occupancy. Now we're raising the rents. How else can we upsell? Well, what if we start opening up a, a company that could rent out different you know, excursions, so to speak, for people? We started doing paddle boards and we started doing you know, beach cruisers and we started doing like electric scooters. You can rent them out for the day. We have like a whole automated system behind the scenes that when somebody does that, it sends an alert to our you know, property manager who brings it out for them. They sign off on a waiver. Everything's done electronically. We live in an awesome world with technology. Like, this, it, by the way, I've owned these properties for two, three years in that range, the, the longest of which is like two and a half years. So this is not like something that I created 10 years ago. Like this is something that we've been doing like over time very quickly. The beautiful part about systems and the point to this case study and why I'm showing it to you is yes, you make more money. Of course you make more money if you have better systems in place. But what you also do is you create a much better user experience. When people stay with us, they have a great user experience because everything's automated. During COVID, when people were freaked out about like meeting people and having like, you know, this like check-in desk, we didn't have a check-in desk. You don't even have to talk to anybody. You walk in your room, you punch in your code and you're in. Like there's no interaction between people. We didn't have to think about that. It's a much better user experience. Like what you guys are thinking sometimes when, you're, when you think about systems, and I don't wanna speak for you, but I've had enough conversations with agents, is a lot of times the thought process is, is if I create these systems, I'm, I'm giving a worse experience because it's not me being hands-on. But that's not accurate. There's no way that that's accurate. Because you still can be hands-on, but you could create systems that actually make your life easier and make their life easier. So let's talk about your dreams. Like most people in here have a dream of continuing to scale their business. I'd like to think that. So you wouldn't be here if you weren't, I'm sure. So you want to scale your business. You want to continue to grow. That's something that, you know, that inspires you. What I'm going to do for however long it takes is I'm going to go through all of the different systems that, that I believe are quick hitters. These are not home runs. I'm just telling you straight up. It's not like, oh my God, you're going to get this and it's going to change your whole world and your business is going to triple overnight. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is setting up automations in your systems to give you singles and doubles every single day. And if you do this properly and if you actually listen to the, the 10 things that I'm going to go through, I guarantee you that you could actually make business while you're asleep. And I can tell you it's a great feeling. When I look at my phone and I wake up in the morning and I have, you have a booking, a booking, a booking, a booking, a booking, and it's all money that I made while I was sleeping, that's the way to live. It's a great life. Like, and the truth of it is, is you could do that in your real estate business. Like the way that you do that in your real estate business is you set up systems that are working when you're not. And that's what we're going to talk about. There's 10 of them. So the 10 of them are going to, by the time I'm done, you're going to be able to do all of these things. First of all, you got to build your audience and we'll talk about that. You're going to automate market reports, schedule content for social media, automate geographic farming. This is via email. You're going to do these two things are not completely automated, but close enough. They take about two minutes each. 
but pay-per-click advertising for social media and targeted pay-per-click advertising, which we'll talk about in greater detail so you understand what that is. Automated social media content, that's kind of like, in, in, there's two different systems for it, that's why I have them separated. Um, instant bait, you'll understand what I mean by bait once I'm done with this. Targeted ads on popular sites, so this is like, if, if anybody knows what real-time bidding is, so like if you think about it, you and you could run ads on Google, and they're gonna cost you a lot of money. You could run ads on Facebook and Instagram, and that's kind of what we highlighted with social media in both of these places. Or you could run ads on all the other sites, which most people don't run ads on. Like most people are not running ads on all the different news sites. Most people are not running ads on, you know, NFL.com and Wall Street Journal and, and Amazon and all these different places. So if you actually start targeting those sites, and I'm gonna teach you a way to do it very easily, but if you start targeting those sites, you're gonna give yourself an advantage because it's so much cheaper than if you went out and started to do ads on Facebook and Instagram and all these other places. And then finally, we're gonna do, you know, automate mailings. And, and you know, specifically reminders related to mailings, and I have a really cool system for that that we're gonna talk about, and then I have a bonus one. Just give me one second, I need some water. Any questions before I jump into this? All right. So, building your audience. I hope that you understand, based on what I just went through, how important it is to build your audience. It's probably the most important thing you could do for your business, hands down. And I talk about it with every single person that joins my office for the last 10 years, and very few people actually do it. Like, very few people. I could, you know, I could probably, you know, not even half the office. Now, why? Because it's boring. Because it's monotonous. It's one of those things that people are like, oh, I gotta sit there for a week or two weeks or whatever it is and put, you know, put people into a spreadsheet. That's not fun, it's not sexy. People don't wanna do it because it's, it's hard. It's hard to take the time to do that. But the reality is, is, is there's nothing more impactful. So that's the first step is like get everybody that you can. I think I got another problem again. Um, I'm sorry, guys. I don't know why this keeps happening. There we go. So get everybody that you can to give you their contact information. Now, some of that might just be picking up the phone and calling them. Some of them might be like, hey, like shooting out a, a mass text to you know, everybody that you know, you know, is on your text chain that you're on. Like whoever it may be, but you gotta build your audience. Now, some of you, and I'm not you know, taking shots at anybody, don't take it the wrong way, but some of you were like me. Like you, you came into real estate and I was 21. Like I didn't have anybody buying or selling real estate that I knew. Like, I, I literally, my, my friends were sleeping on their parents' couch in their basement. So it was not a situation where like, that was where I was tapping into to all this like crazy clientele. So what do you do? Like, first of all, you gotta get out there. Like, and this is not an automated system, but for me, like, I remember like, we went back and we were building. It was like, okay, how do I get out there? Well, I joined a business networking group. And like, you know, I built some credibility there and built up a network. I went out and I got on the zoning board for New Providence because it built credibility for somebody who was younger and wanted to actually like have something that was like official. Like I got, I got very involved in the board of realtors. Like, you know, I'm a trustee still to this day. Like I was very involved on, on the state level in building, you know, the board of realtors. I was the technology chair and all these different things. I think that it's just a matter of getting in front of enough people and realizing that it's not good enough to just get in front of them. It's you have to get in front of them, but then you have to take it a step further and actually get their contact information. And there's a lot of unique ways to do that, but I'm gonna show you one way that Coldwell Banker offers. Anybody ever talk about or look at Cold Realty Resource? I know some of you guys are nodding your head, but a lot of times when I talk about Cold Realty Resource, people think that it's like only for for just calling and cold calling. Like, so it's like, all right, like I wanna, I wanna do circle prospecting around this street. Well, that's true, it definitely works for that. But I wanna, I wanna show you if you go on, and by the way, your desk is gonna look different than my desk because this is our back end site on, on uh, uh, CB Desk. Your desk is gonna look different than mine because all of these different things, you know, you can move them around. So there's different buttons. So I'm just gonna talk about Cole Realty Resource right here. It may be in a different spot, so don't get freaked out if you go there and you can't find it. If you go to Cole and you click on neighborhood search, 
or neighbor search, excuse me. And then down here, you type in whatever you want, whatever neighborhood you're looking for. So you go onto that, you type in a neighborhood. It allows you to do three different functions. It allows you to do a map search, a radius search, or a street search. For the purpose of this, I just use radius search. It's just arbitrary. You can use any one of them. And I did, I put in one of my investment properties. So I, I put that in and basically I said like, I want a radius search of a half a mile around this investment property because I wanna just see, you know, I wanna be able to call the neighborhood, I wanna be able to get contact information for that neighborhood. So I did a half, of, a half a mile in New Providence. In a half a mile in New Providence, there's 2567. That's how many people came up, search results, in that half a mile. So that's one whole neighborhood, it's a big neighborhood. Now, if you look at all of this, you'll see up here, these are cell phone numbers. So anything that's in here means that they have cell phone numbers. You're not gonna get cell phone numbers for everybody, obviously, because some people are blocked, some people, you know, just for whatever reason, they don't have the information. This is a database like anything else. But believe me, when I tell you there's 2,500 you know, plus, um, there's gonna be a lot of cell phone numbers in there. The other thing that's in there is email addresses. Now you could see like out of whatever, I don't know how many there are, 20 or whatever it is that I'm showing, you know, there's five email addresses. The point is, is you're not gonna get email addresses for everybody under the sun, but I will tell you, and this was interesting, I ran a search on my street, and I, I have a lot of those people's email addresses, my neighbors, and they were correct, and I was actually pretty surprised and impressed by that to know that I was getting correct email addresses of people that I know I have their email address, and they confirmed it. So I know that you're not gonna get everything correct, of course not, but you're gonna get a lot of them correct, so now right off the bat, if you start going through your local towns, your local neighborhoods, you don't think that you could build a list of 600? Of course you could. And these are people that you've never even spoken to before. But like you could probably build a list of more than that. And I'm gonna take it a step further. And if you don't light up about what I'm about to say right now, I don't know, you should probably leave. You could also do this in Brooklyn. You could go out and you could build up a list of all the people in our feeder markets because that's where these people are coming from to come here. So if you start doing, you know, if you start pushing out all of your just listed and just solds like into Brooklyn, like, or open house invites or videos that you're talking about, about New Jersey realtor, real estate, don't you think you're gonna get some more business? Of course you are. And the beautiful part about this whole strategy is it's free. Nothing, none of this is costing you a dime because Coldwell Banker is paying for this service for you. So you don't even have to think about it. All you gotta do is set it up. If you set it up properly, then you truly can forget about it later because you're gonna have all of these people in your database and you don't have to come in and say, I don't know that many people. It doesn't matter how many people you know. All you gotta do is just do the research for yourself. Michael, does the DNC designation apply to email addresses <coughs> as well as phone calls? It's a great question that I don't know the answer to, but I would say no for the purpose of what I'm presenting. <laughs> uh, honestly, I, I, it's, it's a good question. Um, it's do not call. I don't believe so. I do think that there's an email version of that. Is the, I, if I really was giving you a truthful answer, I think there's an email version of that, but it's not something that's in here. So, Any other questions about what I just presented on that? All right. So just real simple, just for, for practical nature you, you go in you run the search and then you could go into download to your computer and you download whatever you want like spreadsheet wise so easy you could download a csv file that you could upload to everything what i personally would do if i were you is i would run this search and then this is very basics of excel so i'm not trying to get too advanced here i would just run the search and then i would pull out everybody who i don't have an email address for and i don't have a phone number for like one or the other. If I have one or the other, I'll leave them in there. But if I don't have one or the other, I would just remove that data from here because I'm probably not gonna use it. So once you have that, well now you should have thousands of people in there that you have email addresses for and you just started from ground zero, now you're way advanced compared to most people. So that's number one. Number two, any questions about one before I continue? We're good? All right, number two is Prospect Square market reports. Anybody use Prospe Prospect Square? I know some of you who do because I could, I could look in from a big brother perspective and see who's using it and who's not. But most people are not using it and it's a shame because it's so good. So when you talk about Prospect Square market reports, again, it's one of the tabs on, you know, on the, uh, the desk site. So you go into it, I'm just gonna kind of show you, I'm gonna do a little bit of a walkthrough on how to use this. So you go in on the left-hand side of the screen once you go into Prospect Square, there's these tabs. First thing you're gonna go to is market report. I'm gonna click on market report 
I'm gonna go through this. I could send this out to you guys as well, so don't stress about it. Um, you're gonna go select market report, you're gonna click new, you're gonna put in a client's name, you're gonna select the criteria, you're gonna add the client's home address or the closed ML number. So the reason why you're doing this is it, it actually links up to the MLS. So if you, let's just say you just sold a house, you sold 123 Main Street, like, and you want to put that person on a drip campaign because what is the number one thing we are all terrible at is follow up. Like all of us, like, and it's not because we're not good people. It's not because we don't care about the client. It's because we're busy. It's, it goes back to what I originally spoke about is like we get busy and we don't think about these things. And what happens is, is like, those are the things that get pushed off because they're not immediate needs. But I can tell you right now, they become a really immediate need when somebody runs into my office crying that their ex client that they just bought a million dollar house a year ago was selling with somebody else. And I'm like, well, why are they selling with somebody else? Like, well, I didn't talk to them since then. Well, why do you think they're selling with somebody else? Like, if you don't talk to them, they don't, they don't remember you. Like, you're another transaction. Like, you have to continue the relationship after the fact. And so, if you set them up on this, the cool thing is, is like now, you could set the frequency up how you want, but you could send them, you know, a very nice, chic looking thing, and we're gonna talk about customizations in a second, but you could send them, you know, a breakdown of everything that's going on in their neighborhood. You could send them everything that just sold, you could send them under contracts, you know, solds, whatever you want, actives, very easy way to do it. So you could do it by their home address and do a radius around them so they're getting their neighborhood. Who's not interested in knowing what's going on in your neighborhood? Of course you are, everybody is. Select contact or add contact, preview and approve. So it's gonna come like this. There's gonna be a market report, it's all branded to you. There's gonna be market data with all the just listed, all the just solds, whatever data you're pulling. It's gonna have a breakdown of every single house like, you know, pictures of all of it. If they click on those pictures, it's gonna show them more information. Every single page in Prospect Square is branded to you. So you don't have to think about like them printing out a page and showing it to their friend without your information all over it. Like, and the coolest part about it is this. So on every single page, what does it allow them to do? It allows them to share to social media if they wanted to do that. Like, or it allows them to forward to a friend view in a browser, they could print it out. They have all the functionality to do what they want with this information and it's all branded to you and it's all free. So now, who should receive these? All past clients is like an automatic. If you're not sending these to past clients, I don't, I don't even know what to do. That's like the number one rule, send it to past clients. Because now at a minimum, you're at least touching them once a month, once every two weeks, whatever it is. Like you have to do that, that's just the basics. Beyond that, all potential sellers. If you have somebody who's thinking about selling, why wouldn't you wanna send them information about their marketplace? You have to understand that the way our minds work, they don't necessarily know all of this is automated. Like not every seller realizes that. Some sellers think that you're literally hand sending this to them. And so now the person, how many times have, and I've given examples of this, where an agent who's really good at CRM, they're sending information that's just like pretty much automated stuff. And now all of a sudden they're like, I remember thinking, I'm thinking back to like the Garden State MLS automated auto emails. Like I would send out these auto emails and people would call me up six months later and be like, oh God, your email, thank you so much for sending them every day for the last six months. Like you're really dedicated. I'm just like, like you're very welcome. So the point is, is like, I, they don't realize that. They think that you're like putting in the effort to make them, to give them what they want information wise. And you are, by the way, because you're setting it up. So all buyers looking at specific areas. Like if you have a buyer that's specifically looking in an area, well, here's the thing. Like, let's say they're losing multiple offers over and over again. What we do tend to send them is actives. What we don't tend to send them is solds. Why wouldn't we? Like in a market like this, where houses are selling for here when they're priced here, like, isn't that, doesn't it make sense to send them some of that sold data so they could see, hey, you know what? You missed on that house three months ago and this is where it sold for. We don't do a great job of following up on that. This does it for you. All neighbors, friends, family, anybody with a home, if they own a house, send them this. Like, because to think about it, like, yeah, there's some, there's some setup there, but like, once you set it up, now who is their go-to source for real estate? the person who's sending them information every two weeks or every month or whatever it is. Again, it's free. It's free advertising. Geographic farms. So let's talk about geographic farms. Like geographic farms, like what you could do with this is you could literally say, all right, I have a listing on, again, 123 Main Street. 
I'm gonna go into Cole Realty Resource, I'm gonna pull all the people in that neighborhood, and now I can push out to all those people, and I could also set them up on the same drip campaign. I could set them up on receiving information about that neighborhood, which we're gonna to get to in a second. And the last thing is you. So why you? Because that's a weird one. Why would you wanna send yourself this data? Well, actually, there's a really cool tool that, that I'm trying to, you know, I, I got schooled to that I wanna push along, pay it forward. So Prospect Square, this is number three, this is content for social media. You know how many people come to me on a regular basis and say, oh, I wanna send stuff out on social media, but I'm not that creative, I don't know what to push out, and all this other stuff? Or people come to me and say, you know, there's this group online, this, this Facebook group online, and every Friday, you know, once a month, or whatever it is, or every Friday, they allow us to promote our business. A lot of people in this room are nodding heads. So, I never know what to put up on there, and other agents put up good stuff, and I never even, I never realized what I could put on there. Well, what if you set it up, you automate this system to send to you every single time it's that day of the month. So every day, of the, every time it's that Friday, you will get an email from Prospect Square. Prospect Square, you're just gonna go in, you're gonna go into contacts, I'm just gonna show you the trick on how to do this, and you need to do it the way that I'm showing you, otherwise it's gonna screw you up. You create a new contact, the first name is neighbor. The last name is just a period, because you don't want it to like show. Cover letter salutation, dear neighbor, comma. Email address is your email address. Now why are we setting it up that way? Because now, every single time you wanna receive this information, you're gonna get whatever report you had sent to you and it's gonna say, dear neighbor. Keep in mind, this is going on social media. This is not going out to the person that you're sending it to. So now you're taking this information, you get this via email. You wanna see how easy this is? By the way, this is just reports that it sends out. So if they click in, this, is, this happens to be, a, I showed you a different example of one before I get to what I, the point I was gonna make. I, I send, like, this one is um, a quarterly report for the county. So for some people, and there's a reason why I'm sending this out to you, for some people, you guys serve different towns. If you serve different marketplaces and you know that, send yourself the quarterly one for the county and it shows you all the information for the county, but what it also does, it has additional reports and you could click on every individual town within the county. And the individual towns will give you specific data about that town. So now you have everything you need sent to you in one email. You get, unless you're doing different counties and it's two emails. Now you just click the same thing that I showed you before, share to social media. You could share it to social media, it pops up and it allows you to share to all the different places that you wanna to share to. You can't share it to Instagram because Instagram doesn't allow you to do that. But you could share to Facebook, you could share to LinkedIn, you could share to Twitter, you could share to a hundred different sites. They have all these different, you could share to your blog if you do blogging. Like, and it's, I could tell you it's as easy as literally like click, click, click. I mean, so you receive this email, you don't need any further automation, it prompts you once you receive that email, okay, today's the day that I gotta put it on this Facebook group. You push it out on the Facebook group and now you have a presence where you always were thinking about what to put out there. So just, it just allows you to, to, to build this along you know, a calendar. And that to me is like one of the biggest things that you could do is like have things that constantly prompt you so you don't have to think. Any questions about that? Does it make sense? Good? A little life here? <laughs> All right, good. All right, so the next one is Prospect Square and Coal Realty. Um, geographic farming. I talked about this before, but I didn't go into detail on how to do it. So I said, all right, you, you have a neighborhood that you're trying to go after. You want to send them stuff email-based. Well, what if you take those people and you put them into a group? So now I download this whole, by the way, all you got to do is on the left-hand side of Prospect Square, you go into groups. You click on groups and then you say create new group. And all you do is you put in the Madison Avenue neighborhood, the Hilton section, the Wyoming section, whatever it is. You just, you pull that whole entire section. You know that the people live there because they wouldn't be showing up on Cole Realty Resource if they, didn't, if they didn't live in that area. So you know exactly who you're targeting. You go after it, you create a group. Now you have to go and import export. So every single time you have, this is what I would do, Every single time that I get a new listing, I would take the entire neighborhood, I would circle it, and I would basically say, on Cold Realty Resource, I would, I would go in there, I would circle that neighborhood, I'd pull all their email addresses, I'd import them right into this, it's just a CSV file, it's gonna take me three minutes to do. Like, I import it into this, 
I create a group attached to that and it allows you to, you see down here at the bottom of the screen, it shows every person and then it'll show the group name. So now what I could do, and it's really cool, is I could take that entire group and I could run one search, not 55, I could run one search for that neighborhood, put that neighborhood search into the system and attach it to the group. Every single person in that group is gonna get a dear John, dear Michael, dear Sally, whatever, email because it's all based on their information. It's gonna send the exact same report. So you only have to do it one time and now, instead of going crazy trying to tap into and connect with all these people in, in all these different neighborhoods, well you could just set it and forget it because you've established it now and forever it's gonna send them that information unless they you know, uh, unsubscribe. And people are gonna unsubscribe and that's okay because remember, there's I don't know, thousands and thousands of people in Maplewood, thousands of people in Short Hills, thousands of people in you know, all these neighborhoods. It's an easy approach. A little bonus for you, if you go into the reports and you click new report settings, you could literally change everything you want in here. So if you decided that, you know what, I really wanna, I don't want to look this picture, to, I want it to look different, I want it to look more like South Orange, great. You just update it to look more like South Orange. You know, I want this information to read and sound like it's coming from my voice. Great. Change it to sound like it's come from your voice. Like the point is, is like you could, you can make it whatever flavor you want it to be and it's quick and it does it, it updates it for every single report you're looking at. Simple. Question, please. If you're five months from right? Mm-hmm. I know initially I was told that you can open up one picture. Is it that how you put out a different picture for I'm fairly certain it's still one picture. I believe it's one picture. I, I could confirm that, but I, having gone through it, I think it's one. So the answer to that is you're right. You probably want to do, like they have a picture of like a living room or a kitchen or whatever, because it's kind of generic, it could be anywhere. Um, so that's a good point to make. It'll come out, tag that group, it'll say Madison Avenue neighborhood. So now every single person in that neighborhood is receiving the exact same thing. They don't know that. It's not like they're all being like CC'd on an email. So now you've set up thousands and thousands of people receiving data about their home and their neighborhood and you barely even did anything. I mean, it could take, this whole process could take you 20 minutes. Quite literally, it might even take you less than that. I mean, I could do this probably in five minutes what I just talked about. Number five. The easy button for pay-per-click advertising on Facebook, Instagram. So I, this is not a Coldwell Banker specific tool, but if you're in you know, our, our Maplewood or Short Hills or a couple other offices, anything that I've ever touched, you know, Maplewood Short Hills Summit, we pay for listings to leads. So many of you guys have never used listings to leads, like you should. And if you need the access information, Jamie right there, she's raising her hand. She will get you hooked up and make sure that, you know, we do it for you. So it's, it's, it's a very easy process. Everything on listings to leads has a tutorial video, everything. Like you could watch tutorial videos from now for the next eight months. If you really want to learn everything that this system has, I'm not suggesting you do that. But the point is, is like, this is something that I certainly recommend using if you're not using it. So, this is just the, the homepage for listings to leads. You go on there, let's just assume, let's start with a listing, you have a listing. You click on listing over on the left-hand side, you go to market listing. When you go to market listing, you could change whatever text you want in here, or they just have text that you show up and it's sitting there. So you don't have to change anything if you don't really want to. And by the way, if you're not using emojis when you start to put out stuff on social media, you should. Because emojis actually are, it, there's proven studies that show that people connect with them and feel more comfortable when you're using emojis. They use emojis. So you're, you're going in there, you're setting this up. In two seconds, all you would have to do if you wanted to push the ad the way it reads over here, if you don't want to change anything, you do market listing, you do like, you know, you, you, this is what shows up next. You could just leave it alone if you wanted to. If you wanted to change the location, you change the location. If you wanted to, by the way, as soon as I click push, it will push out to whatever social media accounts I have linked up to it. So it's, it's literally like, when I say a, a two minute process, two minutes is too long. It probably takes you 15 seconds like, to be able to do this. 
you push it out. Now, if you wanted to do pay-per-click ads, if you have your credit card information you know, set up on this, it will push out to Instagram and Facebook and will run ads for you. You could run, you could say like, okay, I just took a new listing. Maybe part of my process for taking a new listing is I spend $50 on pushing ads out to the whole neighborhood. Like, okay, it's one more source to push out ads. All of these ads are, are like mousetraps. Because as soon as you push them out, if anybody clicks on that and wants more information about that, they're giving you their information before they get a thing. That's the way these ads are set up. That's why I like them. They push out on Facebook and Instagram. This is what it looks like. Somebody will see it on Facebook or Instagram. It'll say, what is your time frame to sell? If you want to do a seller ad, it'll say, what is your contact information? Next. If you wanted to, let's just say that you're someone that does really good videos for your listings. You could literally just click one button, same spot where I was just talking about, click one button, drop in a video, and then instead of this being a stationary picture, or a static picture, I should say, it's now a video that's scrolling. So when it goes out to you know, online, now it's like interactive a little bit more. Like you could say like, hey, I'm Michael Panisi with Coldwell Banker. I want to introduce you to my new listing. Click here and see all the information. Like, so now I could just have one video that always plays if I wanted to, if I wanted to just record one. Or I could be me out in front of the house if you really want to get good with it, you know, and say, check out my new listing. Like all the details are, you know, are, you know, are on the link or whatever you want to say. So you could change the video and all that, like I said. The cool part about this with L to L is it's not just for listings. It's also to try to like drive business and do targeting. So what I just talked about with targeting, why it's so crucial, there's gonna be a theme here, is if you set up all of your, your list of, you know, you're sending information to people in groups and whatever it is that you do, like in terms of your, you know, your spreadsheets of, of contacts, you could also target those people through Facebook and Instagram and they don't even know it. So what happens is, we talked about building your audience, you're gonna go in, you're still gonna do the same thing through Cole if you use Cole or you're gonna use your own list. On the same thing that I just spoke about with L to L, there's a spot up here that says, add previously created custom or lookalike audiences. You could drop in your CSV file right into L to L and now it's gonna, it's gonna link up their email address to the email address that they used for Facebook and Instagram and it's going to push out all of the ads and follow them around the internet. How cool is that? So like now, think about this. You're not only taking these ads and you're pushing them out to, you're sending them out to their emails, so they're getting them via email, but now they're also getting them on Facebook and Instagram. And they're like, wow, this person's everywhere. Like, and I'm not even done yet. We're gonna get to another thing in a second. So all you gotta do is just drop it in there and now you follow them around. Sends out like that, that's exactly what it looks like. Um, number seven, L to L automated social media posts. I'm gonna get to the last piece of how to, how to follow people around in a second. But L to L automated social posts. So here's the thing, a lot of people come to me and say like, ah, oh, I don't know what I'm gonna put out content wise on social media. And it becomes like this like ongoing conversation. And a lot of times people will do it for a little bit of time and then kind of like drop the ball on it. And it's like, what is out there that could automate this for me? If you go into L to L and you click social, it's on the left hand side down at the bottom, you say, let's connect your social accounts. This is what'll show up. You have to connect your accounts. So it takes, you know, two minutes to connect those accounts. But you've connected those accounts. This is what it looks like. You could connect your, your business page on Facebook, uh, business account on Instagram. You could connect Twitter and you can connect LinkedIn. I'll strongly suggest to all of you, if you do nothing else, connect to LinkedIn. Because most people, I don't want to speak for you, but most people don't do a really great job on LinkedIn. Like, they're not like, they're, they focus more on Instagram, they focus more on Facebook, but LinkedIn is actually a really good source for business and for, to connect with business professionals. It's a nice way to do it, so at a minimum I would do LinkedIn. Now they have all of these catalogs that you could choose from of all social media posts. There's like, there's literally probably a hundred of them. So I selected kitchen design, interior design, exterior design, home improvements, real estate facts, and real estate questions. That's just what I happen to select. And if you go into those, what you're gonna find is this. So I click on kitchen design, it's all the different articles that they post on kitchen design. Now you could go in there and you could read through every one of them if you wanna get lost in this. Or you could just casually say like, you know what, these are topics that I think would resonate with my, you know, with the people that I have on my social media. So I'm gonna go on there and I'm gonna look through them. It allows you to eliminate certain articles. So there was, you know, there was an article in there on one of these that I saw that was like 
quasi-political, I would never post that. Like, so for me, like, I just eliminated that right off the bat. I don't care which side you're on, I don't want to alienate anybody. So the reality is, is like, you could go in and you could pick through what you want to push out and what you don't want to push out, like, on individual posts within there. The cool part about it is once you've selected this, well, now it'll show you what the posts look like. So if you wanted to get really granular, like, it'll show you, this is a, a motivational post. Keep goals in light. Uh, keeping goals in life can help us move forward. The path that leads us to our goals can be an enlightening experience. You could choose to love this, hate this, whatever, but it's something that I'm not thinking about that's going out that might engage somebody. One in four Americans can't fit their car in their garage. Like, so this is like a real estate based post. There's all sorts of different things in there. Again, you pick what makes sense for your clients, what makes sense for the people that you have in your life. I'm not saying that you should select off on all of these. So now you've selected this, you could set up a schedule. So you could say, I want it to go out Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and I want them to go out at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. So now these posts are automated for you moving forward. You don't have to think about them. They're automatically gonna send them, you know, these posts out. It looks like this. It'll show up on a calendar and it'll show you exactly what posts are going out what days. So now I can click through them and say, you know what, I like that post, I don't like this post, whatever it is, if you wanna, again, get really critical of this. But if you don't, just select categories that are like interior design. Like, I mean, it's not gonna be offensive, it's interior design. Like, and the reality is, is like, you know, you, you go on there and I could tell you, I started this this morning. I've never even, I was playing around with this while I was, while I was putting this presentation together. And I, I set it up myself on LinkedIn this morning and I've already engaged with three or four people that I haven't talked to in years. Like from this morning, from 10 o'clock this morning till now, people were hitting me up like, hey Mike, like I saw you post this article, it was interesting, how you been? And I started cracking up, I'm like, whoa, it does work. Like you just don't know who you're gonna connect with and the cool part about it is this is something you are never gonna do anyway. It's not like you're, you know, it's taking a part of your life away that you were doing. This is like basic stuff that you wouldn't think about. I think it's if I pause too long and I talk too much that I get screwed up here. So it's, which is the problem for me. We, we all know this. <laughs> all right, we're good. So the next thing is what if you go on there and you click landing pages? So you click landing pages, you go to settings and you could do auto posting. So what I just showed you is if you wanted to send out content that was like, you know, interior design and kitchen designs and like all that kind of stuff. Be careful over there. <laughs> now you're good. But what if you wanted to send out real estate driven information? So you could send out real estate information on this too. You could say like home values have changed. Click here to get new home value instantly and free. So now I could create ads that are auto posts. What if I put something like this out? By the way, I could change this picture to read whatever I want. I could have this read whatever I want, but I could put out a post that automatically sends out once a month, two times a month. So it's not something that I'm sitting around thinking about, but it's just auto posting those. And you know what? Like if nobody goes on there and clicks on it and nobody engages with it, okay. But if anybody does, now I just picked up a seller lead that I wasn't even thinking about for free. And it's just going out on your social media pages. So it's like, the, the cool part about social media is like somebody might walk in and, or w go online and see it right then and there, or somebody might not. You don't know who's gonna be online at any given time. So if you post this at random times throughout the month, naturally you're gonna stumble upon different people. It's an easy way to engage. You could set up autoresponders for all of this stuff. So if you wanted to, and I'm not gonna go into great detail on this, but if you wanted to say, all right, I'm gonna put out a post and anybody who responds to this post, I want to have already pre-written an email to them that will go out and say, thank you so much for clicking on blah, 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 because you might be out on an appointment. You might be on vacation. But people, similar, think back to the whole example that I gave you with, with short-term rentals. Like, short-term rentals, like, I'm not sitting in front of a computer every single time somebody books a room. Like, I don't want that job. But I would like them to get a response welcoming them and saying thank you for booking with us. It's the same exact principle. Set up autoresponders so as soon as they've inquired, you're immediately responding to them and saying, hey, I'm gonna follow up with you. Like, or thank you so much and here's a piece of information that you might find useful. It's a simple process. Number eight, L to L, instant bait for social media. So 
I remember years ago, I'm gonna butcher the guy's name and it's gonna drive me crazy, but there was, um, he was this real estate guru that used to run these uh, classified ads. And the ads were like, call this number for, you know, for the 10 reasons or the five reasons that, that sellers fail to sell in the spring market. Like, and he would, he would create these ads. I don't know why I'm blanking out his name. But the whole point of the ad was anybody who called that number wanted to sell their house. Like, it's pretty basic, it's bait. Like, the three reasons are stupid. Like, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact that you're trying to like bring them to you and get them to raise their hand that, you know what? Like we know that these people are interested in whatever it is that you're putting out there. You're, it's bait, that's what it is, it's bait. So if you go on, they have PDF guides on L to L, you can go on and it says the five dangers of overpricing, buying a new construction home, down payment assistance, first time buyer's home guide, how to negotiate when you're selling your home. There's all of these different PDF like uh, reports or guides, they call them. So all you have to do is you basically say, you know, you could put out an ad essentially and you run the ad that says like interested in the five reasons why blah, 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 like, and just run that on pay-per-click advertising. And now you have the content to send them. You could do an autoresponder that automatically sends it to them if they want. But naturally, don't you think that you're gonna get people that will be interested in making a move in one way, either buying or selling a home, if they're the ones that are asking for this information? Of course. And they're not getting it until they give you their information. So the whole point of this is what can we do? What traps can we set up like to just catch as much contact information as we can and continue to build that audience? 25 factors, by the way, here's the cool part. If you click on any one of these things, it actually allows you to create an ad right in it. So you don't even have to think about it. It's so simple. Like you click on this 25 factors that impact your home value. Does anybody want 25 factors that impact their home value if they're not selling? No, they're thinking about selling their home. That's the reason why they want that. Like if I'm gonna live there for 30 years, I don't care about what my house is worth tomorrow. People that want this wanna know what their house is worth. So you just create an ad and it just pushes out. You could schedule it whenever you wanna schedule it. It's automated, it just makes your life easy. You gotta think along those lines. Again, you could schedule it based on a calendar. That's the whole point of this. Everything that I've showed you so far, you could sit down in one afternoon, you could sit down in one day's worth of work with the exception of building your audience. Building your audience could take longer if you go out and try to figure out everybody you know in life, which you should do. But with that exception, everything else, once that's done, you could do all of this stuff in an afternoon. I mean, probably two, three hours and it's, and it's done and it'll do months worth of work for you right up front. HomeSpotter, does anybody use HomeSpotter or Boost? No, I'm kind of glad because this is something that I think is so underutilized and we have it right on, you know, again, it's another one of those buttons on desk. So remember how I talked about before about we could target people with emails, which is what I talked about. We could target people on Facebook and Instagram, which is what I talked about. But where else do we want to target people? Well, one easy thing is if I wanted to create an ad for either, by the way, all I did to get to this screen is I click that button. I click Home Spotter and Boost. This is the first thing that pops up. I have random listings in my name from agents in our office, but basically like if I had this listing, let's say it was a local listing, I wanted to promote it, I could run ads for that. Or if I have no listings, I could go over here. It says promote yourself and market to your sphere. So I'm gonna click that button. It's gonna bring me to this. This will allow me to shoot out ads related to me on any site I want. You could do the exact same thing for listings. It's the same principle. So now I'm setting it out and it's gonna be pushing out to New York Times and to Wall Street Journal and NBC Sports and all these different places. Places where buyers are, they are, but they're not necessarily looking for real estate at that very moment. Sellers go to these sites, but they're not necessarily thinking real estate at that very moment. And then my ad pops up. And I am now, instead of being in a sea of people that, they're com that I'm competing with essentially on Google or some of these other sites, if you think about it, if somebody says, selling my home, Maplewood, New Jersey, there's gonna be a million results that come up. On this, there's only one, it's me. So now, and by the way, they're way cheaper than doing Google ads and they're way cheaper than doing Facebook and Instagram or Zillow or any other site you could think of. So now I'm creating an ad. And so for $100, this is, this is like one of the few things that actually cost some money. 
I could set it up for $100. You could set it up for, I think it's for $200, you could get three months worth of these ads. They have like a, a special package or something like that. But the ads are gonna go out to like 8,000 to 12,000 ads for, you know, per month. So it's gonna push out to all these people. When it pushes out to these people, there's nothing wrong with this ad. I think this is good. I don't particularly love the ad that they have there, but the cool part about it is it allows you to go update background and change whatever you want. So the ad that I wanted to run was for luxury real estate. So I changed the verbiage a little bit. You feel free to copy this because I just made it up, but it says the top luxury agent for discerning clients. That's their, that's what they have there. You could push them to any site you want. So if you have a really great website that you want to push them to, great, push them to that. If you don't, some of you guys just never set your websites up properly or whatever, you don't have to push them to that. You could push them to an L to L page and just do a landing page that captures their information. So again, that part of it's free if you want it, but I, I have just the basic thing that they have in there and I put the leader in global luxury home marketing because Coldwell Banker is the leader in global home marketing, global luxury. Experience the difference, click for a confidential conversation. And I'm pushing out, I could change all that right there. I, I just, I wrote this myself, you know, yesterday night. So I could also click the audience that I wanna send it to. So let's just say I live in New Providence, I select a New Providence. But here's the cool part, this. It says add a custom audience for contacts and website visitors. So now what I could do is I could take that same custom audience that I created before, that I have that CSV file, I could drop into this and now I'm following them around, I'm sending them emails, I'm following them around Facebook and Instagram and now I'm following them around their websites, all the different websites that they go on because it, what it's doing, it's taking their email address, it's tying it back to their IP address and it's sending them just like when you go on, uh, you go on a shoe store and Zappos sends you a million things and follows you around, well now your ads are following them around. So think about this. If you have a seller that you are, forget about a seller, if you have a person that you think is going to sell, let's just say you have a, a whole list of people that have you know, expressed an interest in selling their home in the future, follow them around the internet. Like, because that's where people spend a lot of their time on their phone, a lot of their time. We, we know that most people, that's what they're doing. They're spending time online. So now you're following them around Facebook. You're following them around, sending them emails of updates about their neighborhood. They're seeing ads of you on every website they go on. Who do you think they're gonna list with? They're like, this person's everywhere. This person's doing so much business, they think. And meanwhile, all of what I just like, explained to you, all of it could be less than $100 a month. I mean, it's in that range. It's not a lot of money. Like, and I'm not saying some of you guys don't have money to spend, I, I respect that, but like, for those of you who have any budget to spend, this is an easy approach. This is the whole offer that I was talking about before. So number 10, this is another thing that costs a little bit of money, but I personally think it's just an awesome system. So I wanted to show it to you. So I've spoken about this at, at one office meeting, you know, months ago, and I use it, I use it all the time. So send out cards. With send out cards, what it allows you to do is, Keanu's up on there, happy belated, she's somewhere in here. Um, so what it allows you to do is you could take your whole sphere, you could dump it into this system with all of their, their birthdays, their anniversaries, their home purchase anniversary, every like important date in their life, you could dump into this system. And it allow, what it does, it'll send you an email reminder that this is their birthday or whatever else. It comes with an app. So the app allows you to take whatever picture you want and make it into an actual card that you send them in the mail. So what I do is I go online and I say like, if I come across like a really cool thing on Facebook, somebody is like celebrating a birthday, somebody's doing a whatever, I could take a picture of that from online and send it to them with their picture on the front of that card with a little message inside. Don't you think that that's more personal than the average thing that we're doing? Now here's the cool part. I'm able to do that and I could do that from social media. I could do that if I'm out in an event with somebody. I meet somebody, let's say I have a, um, well, we'll bring it to real estate. Let's say I have somebody that shows up at my client appreciation party and I have a professional photographer at my client appreciation party taking pictures. Well, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna get the best leverage from those pictures? Well, what if I were to take all those pictures and send every single person a thank you card with my face and their face next to each other at my client appreciation party? 
and saying, thank you so much for showing up. It means so much to me for you to be here and all of that. Don't you think I'm gonna get more legs out of that than what we're doing normally? Of course I am. It's such an easy approach. And the crazy part about this, and for those people who are cost conscious, most people are, like, this is $97 a month, I could send an unlimited amount of cards. So for $100 a month, and this includes postage, I could send as many cards as I want. I could sit here all day long and send cards to people at my sphere of influence for $100 a month. It's so simple. Like, they're betting on me not sending enough cards to account for $97. They're losing on me. Like, and I can tell you right now, like that to me is the mentality is like basically like send like, you send five to 10 cards a day, just wake up every morning and you send a card. People are gonna engage with that. What you could also do, which is cool, is you could drop in different things. I could drop in a QR code in the card and now I could push them to a new listing that I have. You could do all sorts of creative things with this if you start thinking about it. If you guys do, speaking of QR codes, if you wanted to like, you know, look more into this system, just take a picture of the QR code and it'll, it'll bring you to it. Um, so the whole point of this is we went through, you know, briefly, but we went through how to engage people on market reports, like, and make sure we get them to have real estate content. We, we push through how to engage people for, obviously that's emails, how to engage people on social media, how to create social media content for free. Most of what we're talking about, almost 90% of what I spoke about today is free. They're free systems. They just take you setting it up and then forgetting about it. I wanna give you one piece of bonus content. So the bonus content is this. Everything that I talked about for the most part was talking about marketing. But what about working with the clients you have? Like you're, you now, you know, you get a client, you get a buyer or seller, you get them under contract. Like most people don't have great systems related to that. Like some people do, the better agents do, but a lot of people don't have systems related to that. And because you don't have systems similar to, and this is why I started with this example of what we're doing with the, the vacation rentals, is vacation rentals, once we have all the automated systems, well now we can get sexy with it and bring in different things. So what we're doing is the experiences. So experiences like, you know, you can rent out, you know, all these different equipment and all that. We're also, you know, we've connected with like local, like, you know, restaurant owners and different things to try to create synergies between our systems to try to let, like, excuse me, elevate their experience. Well, you could do the exact same thing with the clients you have. So I'll give you an easy example is if you go into zip forms, everybody in here uses zip forms for the most part. So if you're not using zip forms, like, you're probably not selling houses because you know, it's buying or selling houses, you're using zip forms. You go into zip forms, I want you, most people go in and they click on the dashboard and then they go new and they create their new transaction. Before you do that, I want all of you guys to do this. And if you haven't done it already, believe me, it will make your life, it'll change your life overnight. You go to templates and you create a new template. Now some of you guys have probably already have templates set up and the templates that you have set up are along the lines of like, Every single time I go in, it, pre, it, it already writes me in. So I might have a buyer side template. I represent a buyer or a seller side template. I represent a listing. And it automatically will plug in my information. So now I don't have to write my information into the system because it's already done for me. It's one less thing I have to think about every time I write up a contract. So that's a very basic feature of a template. Another thing that you guys have for templates, my guess is you probably have something along the lines of, you know, all the documents that you would have that you would typically use for a listing or you would use for a seller. They're just built in templates. That's all like very basic stuff and it's great and you should do it. Take it one step more advanced. Click on templates. I could create a template. Let's just assume that I have one, but if I don't, you're just creating a template like that. Now I'm going to click on checklists. Has anybody ever used this? Oh, great, I love it. So if you click on checklists, you could then establish a new checklist. So I'm just labeling this one a buyer checklist just for this, the purpose of it. And then I could create tasks within that checklist. So here's the thing. Let's just say I said sold post, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. It will pull up a thing that says it has my task, it has the due date of it, I can make it relative and I could say one day after closing. So now it's going to send me an email reminder one day after closing that I'm supposed to send out an Instagram or a Facebook or a IG post or, or excuse me, or a LinkedIn post of just sold. Now the cool part about this is for anybody who has an assistant 
is you don't have to be the responsible party. So the responsible party could be anybody you want. You could just send it to an email that automates it to send it to your, your high school teenager that says like, you know what, this is, your, this is your job that I'm paying you for. Like anytime I sell a house, you're gonna get a reminder and you just have to put out there that you know, a just listed uh, or just sold card on Instagram, on Facebook or whatever. You could also, and here's the cool part, is it automates it based off of, so if you, go into, if you go into this, when you click on summary, so every single deal that you do has a summary page. You click on summary, that's the first thing that you'll, it'll show up to. You're gonna fill these dates in. You could create tasks that tie into every single thing within a transaction. So let me, let me kind of give you a, an idea of what that would look like. What if you created points of celebration for that consumer? So a point of celebration would be like, we just went under contract, like congratulations. So now what you could do is you will get an email sent to you and the crazy part is, I'm gonna go back a couple slides, you see this, attach documents? I could attach something to that document to make sure that when, they receive, when I receive it, because it's going to me, you know, I, I could set it up that way, because I don't wanna automate it, this is the one thing I would recommend, is don't automate it to send out to your client because God forbid the deal falls apart, you don't want them to get an automated email that says, congratulations, like, you're gonna look stupid. So automate it to send to yourself or to send to your assistant, and now you're sending out to that, to that party, it could be, you know, now you receive it, all I gotta do is forward, simple, because it already has the attachment that I want. So I'm gonna talk about a couple different things that you could use on this. I could use A is what I just talked about, points of celebration, congratulations, like just wanted to let you know, blah, 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 whatever it is. Or what about things that like commonly come up? I talked about this before, and I, this is why I started with that example of you know, running you know, all of the, these operations that I run. When, I'm, when we get a problem, we wanna fix the problem before it starts. So one easy thing that you could think about is every single time somebody goes under contract, what's the next question? Do you have the name of any home inspector? Like everybody asks the same thing. Like they all wanna know like, all right, well what comes next? What's the next step in the process? Like when do I have to, you know, you know what do I have to do in terms of appraisal? Like, you know, you get all these same questions. What if you set up upon under contract, because remember it's basing it off of the dates that you're putting in there. As soon as it goes under contract, it's going to send you an email that says, with an attachment attached to it if you wish to, that says here is an email with all of the, the home inspectors that I recommend, or here's the, the information of the home inspectors I recommend, what other tests that I would do. All you gotta do now is write it out one time and then for the rest of your career, you have a checklist that automates it for you and then sends it to you at the point in time where it's most necessary to send to that client. Now you're sending it off and you look like a hero because you're doing it before they ask. Like it's such an easy system, but the, the reality is, is like we do the same patterns. We do the same things over and over again. And we don't necessarily always set up systems for it because they're just like, oh, that's an easy thing to do. But the easy things to do, they build up. They build up and they, what it does is it clogs our schedule so we don't have enough time to go out and build the relationships that we want to build. We don't have enough time to service the clients the way that we want to service them. Like, if we set up systems, it's gonna make your life a lot easier, but it's also gonna make this business a lot more lucrative for you. Any questions? We good? <laughs>